Hello, I'm Benton County Sheriff Troy Heck. Violence in the workplace is a topic that none of us wish to think about. Unfortunately, the potential for violence in the workplace is something that's a modern reality for all of us. Knowing how to properly respond to threats and violence in the workplace could be the difference between life and death. Maintaining public safety is a top priority of the Benton County Sheriff's Office, and we have produced the videos in this workplace safety series to show you how to best respond to threats or violence in the workplace. We bring this training to you in the hopes that you never need to put into use the things you learn here, but knowing that one day these lessons could save the life of you or someone else. Thank you and be safe. So if there's an incident where there's an active shooter at your location, um, you know, obviously we'll get notified and if it's in the courthouse or over at social services, it's going to be a lot of probably white shirts and admin people running over there. We're going to, first thing we're going to do is go directly to the threat. So if there's a shooting if in this building and we come in here and we hear the threat down in the last courtroom, we're going to run right to that courtroom. Um, if someone is shot and laying on the ground in front of us, we're going to go right past them. Our first goal is to stop the threat. Um, so just so you know, we're not going to administer aid to people. We're going to go, like say, right to the threat. We'll be given loud verbal commands. I know a few people in here. I've been here 20 years. I don't know hardly anyone. Um, so when we're coming in, we're giving commands. Keep your hands where they're visible. Don't sit there and point and make fast movements um, because, like I said, we don't know who you are. But if you know where the shooter is, yell. You know they're down there. Um, once the threat is eliminated or cleared or an area is cleared, there'll be other people coming in behind us to, to deal with injured people. Um, and to evacuate everyone. We'll move everyone to a, a safe location and then it's going to be a crime scene and everyone's going to be interviewed and, and spoke with. You're not going to be able to leave right away. Um, like I say, as the threat progresses, if, it's an, if a guy gets barricaded or something, there's going to be officers from all around coming here. Um, so just uh, just be prepared to listen to the officers and uh, the ambulance will come, fire department will probably come and help with medical stuff. As the SWAT team is called, when, when this is going on, um, as you guys are making contact with dispatch, trying to give all the information that you can to dispatch, telling who it is, how many suspects, what, what do they have, what's going on, location. They're relaying that to the uniform officers, and then they're also calling out the SWAT team. Our SWAT team is a, a joint team that's made up of Benton and Stearns County. So we have some people that's going to be coming from rural west side of Stearns County. So as, as we're getting here and, for, you know, getting in, um, formulating a plan it's going to take some time so that's why right away the initial people you will see will all be uniformed officers and I say uniform is because like you said there's going to be people from Sauk Rapids, Rice, St. Cloud everyone's going to be responding you're going to have probably Mille Lacs County coming over here so there's going to be a lot of people that you don't recognize and a lot of people that don't recognize obviously other people that are here so as that's going on and they're setting up a perimeter and they're setting up a command post which would be a lot of times our admin and other people setting things up for for late information the SWAT team is on standby getting the information and getting things put together by this time as the SWAT team is pretty much here and put together and going to be entering into the facility if need be the uniformed officers are going to either have uh, the suspect down the suspect probably will be barricaded in a room or a corner. So when we come in, we're going to go straight to that area. So we want to gain as much and control that area because then the rest of the building is pretty much controlled. So then we can start then coming in with paramedics and other people and rescuing people and getting victims out safely while we contain that one area that's still unsecure. So 
having that in mind, if we secure him and he is in there in a barricade and he didn't end up putting himself down or having officers put him down, we're gonna, it could take a long time. Hostage situation, if that's going on, um, we're gonna try to communicate with him, negotiations and that portion of it, and that could take quite a bit of time. Um, if something would go wrong during that time, SWAT team is that close that we would be then enter in and put down if we need be uh, the threat, or like I said, we would just try to negotiate with him. Um, after the threat is over, being either he put himself down or uh, we had to eliminate the suspect, we're gonna do a secondary search. The secondary search is a more thorough, slow, methodical search that we will do and we will be going in, checking every room, because uh, we don't know necessarily if he put down any packages or if there's another person hiding with a firearm or anything. So we're gonna be doing a much slower methodical searches and that's when we'll probably be entering into rooms and you know telling people, okay, escorting people out, go to a different place. Um, when we're, the SWAT team, most people see them um, on TV. We're gonna be dressed, so you guys know we're gonna be dressed in uh, like the military type outfits will be, uh, you know, our BDUs, uh, could be all black. Some people have green, multi-green, but it's gonna be exterior vests, Kevlar helmets and everything. So uh, we'll be very distinct and what we appearance versus the uniformed officers. Okay, if you're involved in the active shooter situation, first thing to do, if you can do it, is run, is get out of the area. Um, every building has multiple exits. If there's shooting over here, run that way. Um, don't worry about grabbing cell phones, grabbing that work project that you're working with. Get out. That's the biggest, most important thing. Um, if you can't run, hide. If you're in your office and you can lock the door, lock the door. Um, there's been, we've seen a lot of videos, I've heard about a lot of active shooters where the, the shooter usually does not have a target. Their goal is to go there and injure and kill as many people as they can. And they go and they just check a door. If it's locked, they go right to the next one. Um, so if you can hide and lock the door. If you get to a situation where the you can't, get into a, a secure locked area and the shooter comes in then you got to fight and you grab anything that you can you know if it's scissors pens anything you can to protect yourself because your life life of a lot of other people might depend on it um, like I said we hopefully we can get there as soon as we can but it's going to be a few minutes no matter what before we get there so you might need to fight um, like I said if you fight give a, a hundred percent don't it's not worth trying to negotiate with them because they don't care about you. They could be some of you know, but at that point, their goal and mindset is just to kill as many as they can. Um, so, and another thing is most shooters, when law enforcement gets there, they take themselves out. They don't want to go to jail. They'll, they'll uh, a lot of times kill themselves before law enforcement does anything. They, they hear the sirens or they hear the law enforcement coming down the hall, they'll end it on their own. After the threat is over, <coughs> non-wounded victims brought to a central location. So if the shooting's over here, maybe everyone will go over to the, the high school or to the sheriff's office. Um, everyone's gonna be identified and interviewed. We'll let you make calls to your parents or your 
family and everything, let them know that you're okay, but you're not, they're not going to be able to come and pick you up right away or something. You're going to be there for a little while um, before you re reunite with the families, but we'll do that as fast as we possibly can. But we do have a crime scene that we do have to investigate and people that we do need to interview. Yeah. Here's a short video kind of on what you can do in this situation. It may feel like just another day at the office, but occasionally life feels more like an action movie than reality. The authorities are working hard to protect you and to protect our public spaces. But sometimes bad people do bad things. Their motivations are different. The warning signs may vary, but the devastating effects are the same. And unfortunately, you need to be prepared for the worst. If you were ever to find yourself in the middle of an active shooter event, your survival may depend on whether or not you have a plan. The plan doesn't have to be complicated. There are three things you could do that make a difference. Run, hide, fight. First and foremost, if you can get out, do. Always try and escape or evacuate even when others insist on staying. Encourage others to leave with you, but don't let them slow you down with indecision. Remember what's important, you, not your stuff. Leave your belongings behind and try to find a way to get out safely. Trying to get yourself out of harm's way needs to be your number one priority. Once you are out of the line of fire, try to prevent others from walking into the danger zone and call 911. If you can't get out safely, you need to find a place to hide. Act quickly and quietly. Try to secure your hiding place the best you can. Turn out lights, and if possible, remember to lock doors. Silence your ringer and vibration mode on your cell phone. And if you can't find a safe room or closet, try to conceal yourself behind large objects that may protect you. Do your best to remain quiet and calm. As a last resort, if your life is at risk, whether you are alone or working together as a group, fight, act with aggression, improvise weapons, disarm him, and commit to taking the shooter down, no matter what. Try to be aware of your environment. Always have an exit plan. Know that in an incident like this, victims are generally chosen randomly. The event is unpredictable and may evolve quickly. 
The first responders on the scene are not there to evacuate or tend to the injured. They are well trained and are there to stop the shooter. Your actions can make a difference for your safety and survival. Be aware and be prepared. And if you find yourself facing an active shooter, there are three key things you need to remember to survive. Run, hide, fight. Now we're going to go into a, um, a barricade situation, the negotiations, and Lieutenant Patterson and Chief Deputy Jacobson will be talking about that. Okay. Um, what I'm going to talk about is hostage situations. If you hear or see a hostage situation that you're not immediately involved with, you should remain calm, immediately remove yourself from danger, and call 911. If possible, you should report the incident of the location, the number of hostages, a physical description of the suspects if they're known to you. Also, if you see any weapons that the hostage taker has and your name, location, and phone number. For a law enforcement response, the SWAT team and negotiators will be notified. Uh, SWAT team members will respond to this team. As they explained before, that could take a lot of time for them to get there. Um, in the meantime, negotiators will attempt to establish contact with the hostage taker. Um, with our cert team, we have four negotiators. There's two from Benton County uh, and two from Stearns. So if we cannot establish communication um, via cell phone or a landline inside of wherever they are, uh, we'll make arrangements to insert a communication device, um, such as a throw phone, and that would be inserted through a door or a window. So if at all possible, you should try to um, stay away from those areas if you're confined to a room, and sometimes you might not have a choice as to where they put you, but if at all possible, you should try to stay away from those locations. Um, the throw phone, when that comes in, it's just a one-way communication for us um, to talk to the, negoti or to the hostage taker. So if they pick up the phone, the only thing they can get is us. They can't dial anybody else um, on that phone. Sometimes negotiations take an extended amount of time. Um, it's not usually something that ends real quickly. Our goal is to resolve the situation without anyone getting hurt. Um, while we're negotiating with the people, the SWAT team, they're responding to the um, scene, grouping up, and formulating a plan. If at any time while we're conducting the negotiations, hostages appear to be in an immediate danger, then the SWAT team will, or they're on standby to take action. So if things go, are going badly, we can just notify them, you need to go in now. If you are taken hostage, uh, remain calm obey their commands, um, avoid direct eye contact with them. Um, you know, w if you are taken hostage, they may uh, try to talk to you about uh, whatever is in their head at the time or whatever their ideology is, why they're doing what they're doing. Um, it's probably in your best interest to just kind of agree with whatever they're saying, don't get into an argument with them and agitate them further. Um, just remain calm, uh, don't speak with them unless they speak to you, and also uh, do it in a calm voice. Again, I'm sure none of us are going to complain while we're there. 
uh, you know, because of the hostage takers more than likely armed uh, to keep you there. Again, avoid getting into any uh, political discussions, whatever rants that the hostage taker may be on at the time. Remain calm, no sudden movements um, or anything of that nature. While you're there and taken hostage, try to gather as much and absorb as much information as you can about the description of the person. In the event that you're released or able to get away, you can relay that to someone on the outside uh, so we know uh, the description of who that person is. In the event that uh, Leslie's on negotiating with the individual, she relays to the team that, hey, things aren't going well and she thinks someone is going to get hurt. Uh, we'll have a, uh, a team as close as we can get to the area where the hostage taker is with the victims and at some point we can just make entry into that room and if we have a description of the, the hostage taker amongst all the victims uh, the team is going to know who that person is right when they make entry into that room or area. Stay low to the ground next to cover, stay away from doors and windows where a throw phone might be brought in or other uh, distraction devices. If you're taking, <coughs> excuse me, if you're taking hostage do not attempt to escape unless there's extremely good chance of survival. Um, sometimes being submissive and obeying commands, um, it's safer to do that. If, like the previous video said, if your life is in immediate danger, grab anything you can, use it to defend yourself and others, and fight 100%. Again, officers might come through the windows, might come through doors, whatever is gonna be the uh, uh, easiest entry point. Again, they may also, uh, <clears throat> smash out a window and, and come through another, another door just for distraction um, for the hostage taker. Again, if that happens, um, don't run anywhere, drop to the floor, remain still, keep your hands visible uh, because odds are likely that the officers going into that room don't know who the hostage taker is or don't know who you are. Um, don't resist officers a lot of times uh, you may, if, this, if you're ever handcuffed by them, they're going to handcuff everybody. So you may at the time uh, be angry because why am I being handcuffed? Everybody's going to get handcuffed just for safety purposes until they can get everything figured out and then you'll be, uh, handcuffs will come off as soon as we can. When leaving the building, you should leave with your hands visible. Expect to be interviewed by police like they explained earlier. Um, if possible, describe the captor to the officers that are interviewing you and don't expect to leave or go home until you have been interviewed by officers. The, the one hostage incident that we've had here in Benton County was back in June of 2013 uh, when a Coburn's employee was taken hostage at knife point about quarter to three in the morning. Um, in that situation the employee complied with the suspect's demands and drove the suspect to the Twin Cities area. Once they got down there um, the employee was allowed to leave by the suspect and after the employee was released the suspect continued on the crime spree um, stealing vehicles threatening other people with knives and he was uh, eventually apprehended when he crashed a stolen car but in that situation um, we didn't have any way to communicate with either the suspect or the hostage um, however the, the hostage complied with the demands and was eventually released unharmed